Gracias, gracias. Yeah. Um, I guess this uh, video we're going to put together, or this footage, uh, I think it's two or threefold. I think, first of all, there's been a lot said in media and social media about, uh, you know, officiating and, and public uh, uh, giving out to each other between myself, Warren Gatlin, and, you know, the Springboks and the Lions and so on. I, I think where the things got really, for us, a bit cluttered and, 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 and frustrating was when the Lions started moaning about, you know, uh, officiating on the field. So obviously then, you know, he talks to the media. Uh, and according to me, the protocol is you don't talk through the media, you talk through World Rugby. Uh, I guess where we got a little bit worried was when... Um, you know, we got the, the narrative that, that, that we are this dirty team. Um, we had our meetings with, with yourself, Joel uh, and Joe, and discussed that and said, listen, you know, we really would like this to be uh, uh, a test match series that's positive. Uh, and so we had a nice meeting with uh, Nick Berry before the first match. Uh, one of the things that we did highlight beforehand is that, listen, you know, there is four countries uh, uh, that forms the alliance. And we just asked him specifically, just give uh, us as much respect on the field uh, as South Africans. So the, so the test match happened, and unfortunately, in our opinion, and again, uh, uh, I can be pointed out wrongly or saying things in the wrong way, or, and I'm sure Lions supporters won't agree, and I'm sure some South African supporters won't agree. Uh, the frustration came in is when we actually did, did lose the match, and we went through our review, worked work through Saturday night, worked through Sunday. So that long intro, I probably want to try and, and get into a few clips. And I'm pretty sure, and, I, and I'm sure people will go and say, let's go and look at all the mistakes the Springboks made. And that would be wonderful. Foul play or offsides or whatever they can do. Because if we make all these mistakes on, on the one side and on the other side, the same mistakes is unpunished, uh, then, you know, Rugby isn't really a fair game. Uh, yeah, let's go for it. Uh, the first one is, uh, it's just, the answer we got is, uh, it's just a late tackle on Faf and it was a penalty. And the answer, we'll accept it. Uh, I'm basically going to play it. Uh, Faf carries the ball and Curry shoulder charge him late. And no arms in the tackle. And uh, we believe it might be a yellow card, but it was said, uh, you know, it's just a penalty. The question is just, if we shoulder charge like that, will it always just be a penalty? This is where two players, um, uh, it's actually uh, Curry coming from the side. We we got the director from World Rugby, that side entry, and going on the lower limbs of a player is the most dangerous thing which there currently is. So for us, this is clear side entry and it's uh, going on the lower limbs of a player. So uh, I know the explanation was uh, that he said, um, you know, there was already, uh, there's no danger in it. It's the one where, uh, the big debate one, where Marius Jonker uh, eventually uh, uh, had to decide it was Marcus Olema Pimpi pulled back and then the Damien Dalenda ground the ball or not. So here you can clearly see Marcus Zola being held back. Um, so foul play overrules anything else, so there can be a knock-on beforehand. Um, the explanation which Nick gave me is that foul play must be dangerous to overrule uh, something else. Now, I, I've looked through the law book, I can't find the place where it says foul play must be dangerous to overrule a previous mistake like a knock-on. Having the narrative being imprinted that we are more into foul play and to dangerous and reckless play than the Lions. Here Bongi goes in for a tackle and it's a safety belt tackle like we all call it. It's around the shoulder, arms around there and we accept it. Um, the problem however is when you look at the following. If you now compare this tackle here where Damon Derlander uh, carries the ball, both number 21 and the center, both have uh, seat belt tackles around uh, Damien Dalender's uh, shoulders slash uh, neck. Now the explanation here is that uh, Damien Dalender had a level change here. Now uh, again, 
the same happened with the two tackles where the South African players tackled. There was also a level change, but this was not penalised. And according to Nick, you know, there's no force in these tackles. So this, that's the reason why that was not penalised. Here is obviously the big debate, which is mind-baffling. If you look at the score, 1917 again. Uh, Vili catches a ball, Amish Watson gets him. Uh, I don't think anybody can argue that he tips him beyond the 90 and, you know, Vili lands on his shoulder slash back. But I, uh, I can see nothing less than a yellow card here. I haven't seen one incident like this in the last five years where a player has got away with less than a yellow card here. So again, if you look at the reaction here, and I'm get, again going to talk about the respect the referee shows towards the South African players compared to the, to the Lions players, uh, which we actually pr prior to the game discussed with the referee and said to him, just give both, both teams the same amount of respect. And then he just uh, 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 you know, calmly says, you know, there was a bit of a, left, uh, a leg left. Yeah. Yeah, this one, again, uh, this one I, I, I can accept that it's tough for the referee to see. Uh, but it's again, you're lifting a player's leg and driving him into the ground. Uh, and maybe the referee didn't see it. Uh, Duan van Amara is coming from outside. Obviously, the law states when there's a player bound over a tackle player, there's already an offside line. So Duan van Amara can't come in from that side, that's the first offence. And then the second offence, they're picking up both legs of Mapimpi and driving him into the ground. But, you know, this, one is, uh, th this one is again, uh, and I guess this is really a question of, of how, do, uh, how do you actually get this wrong? How do you actually decide I'm going to give the one team uh, uh, eight seconds advantage? And I give the other team 20 plus seconds advantage for a penalty. It's just, it's just something where, where, where I wonder if this is not a mindset. Stay there. You got penalty advantage there, nine. Advantage over. Yeah, I called it. Uh, just after this one, they they get advantage. With Duan from the over, then Tom Curry. This time it's uh, the Springboks' turn to so concede a penalty at the breakdown. Strong work from Conan. Price across the face from Bigger for Curry. And Bigger floats a beautiful pass away to Watson. Now we'll get back, guys. And they'll come all the way back for the penalty. It was just inside the Lions' half. Uh, the question is, uh, and again, what we wanted to ask him on Sunday is just, how do you get that wrong? How do you give the one team eight seconds and there's not even material or territorial advantage and obviously not time advantage? Uh, uh, and then you give the other one territorial and time advantage more than the other team. It's just something that's... Uh, very tough to understand. His tackles on Cheslin Colby. Uh, I mean, he said low to, no tolerance, low tolerance. You know, they're going to penalise guys who doesn't roll away. You had two, two guys tackled uh, Cheslin Colby. Uh, you've just seen how they've penalised Quaha for not rolling away. Here, yeah, the two guys clearly lies on our side. You can see none of them are rolling away. Uh, bigger in with his one foot, but I mean, then Courtney Laws was just as obvious. Uh, and now you can see how Fof struggles to get the ball out, out and not, not that 10, not the 9, none of them are rolling away. Yeah, exactly the same, last play of the match, we need 5 points, we do the kickoff. Damien Willemso wins the ball, now 13 in the 22. Uh, if you think of the previous ones, we penalised us for not rolling away. I mean, there's no attempt, we're for 13 there. He's lying on our side, it's the last play of the match, we are desperate. He is now fully lying outside. The ball, there the ball comes out and he, he still didn't roll away. So, uh, again, consistency is definitely out the window and I think his reason was the ball is immediately available. Here's an example of uh, where we probably saw there's going to be a tough day at the breakdown when we had this line break and it's minute 21 and CI is the line break and we have totally overlap on the left hand side. Now with AJ, he leans over the ruck. He, he, uh, in my opinion, he's not carrying his body weight, but I'm sure you'll say 
he is carrying his body weight. So uh, let's say fair enough, he's carrying his body weight. Uh, and now Fof is on his feet, trying to play the ball, and Itoja is pushing the ball to the ground. Sia is not touching the ball at all. Uh, we managed to get the penalty against us, which, in my opinion, is almost a cynical foul, pushing the ball to the ground there when we have an overlap on the left-hand side. Kwaka uh, gets the ball. Uh, we feel he's got a clear pull on the ball. He's lifting the ball. Uh, but he actually says, um, I think he says no clear lift on the ball. So here is Trevor Nyakane, the next one. Alvin Jones is carrying. Trevor's got his hands on the ball. He's trying to, to lift the ball and he's got the ball in the air. It's a penalty against Trevor. So uh, again, I say you can get this easily wrong uh, and you can dissect it. And I, I know this is the area where you say now you're nitpicking, but uh, I just think if you can apply the law the same right through the game, that would be great. Oh. He's playing on. Okay. So guys, just took a while to get it through. No. It's just a knock on, guys. And then Sia comes to him and said to him, it's a knock on, and the player was in front of him. And it's almost like he's, 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 he's having a laugh at Sia. You can see Sia still there talking to him, but he's just ignoring him. The same with the TMO, and I guess that's where Warren Gatlin in the media, and that's why we're a bit out in the media this week. Yeah, this one, this one, Nick came back to us and said to us, yeah, you will actually talk to Joe, you, Joe, you and Joe, uh, about this. Uh, he, he actually requested in the pre-match meeting that we don't, when a ruck has collapsed, uh, or it's a dead ruck, that we actually don't go and pull and tuck and make it messy at the ruck. He actually requested that. We actually told him it's part of our, of our tactics, and he said, can we please change that? And so we went to our team and said, listen, yeah, we're not doing these tactics anymore. Then, in the game, they do exactly the same, right in front of him. They take Phil Long, uh, uh, hangs over, he pulls uh, uh, and he makes it easier for Mario Toje. But then exactly what he told us not to do and we must change our mind, he then allows them to do. Here you can see again Taik Furlong, he's actually now jumping onto the rock. He's actually collapsing a rock, which is totally against the law. He's not even disrupting the base of the kicker. He's just jumping purely onto the rock. Now, for somebody that told us, listen here, He's got, we must change our behaviour because he's going to penalise us. Uh, surely, in the, in the position where he's standing there, he can see that Taik Furlong is actually jumping onto the guy, onto the ground. This one is for me one of the most... People laugh at this one, but uh, even at primary school level in South Africa, we get taught when a player lies on the ground, uh, you know, you leave him lying like that until the medics come up. We actually have a programme called Box Smart, which we follow strictly where we know when a player is down on the ground you don't touch him you actually leave him in that position now for me it's actually incredible that three things in a row happens here the first thing is without a doubt uh, i can show you three angles uh, where chisel colby was played in the air so there was no penalty or referral for him being played in the air that's the first part then the second part he actually landed in field and then he was taken out uh, and then the third thing, Vinny Pola comes and just, uh, you, know, you, you know, he pulls him up from the ground as, as if he's a, uh, just a doll which he picks up. Uh, if, if that was a serious neck injury or back injury, I don't think he would have laughed and had these uh, quirky quotes which he currently have in the newspapers and which is all over social media. So uh, I, I think uh, this shows a total lack of respect for, for the Springbok team and I'll play this through. And you can decide the now in this one the flanker goes up and scrums and I lose it. Uh, Oxen J is actually out for the next week or two with a neck injury after this. Uh, I mean it's clear and obvious that you can't allow the flanker to scrum onto a loose head who's in a compromised position uh, and then lift him up uh, and that's where his, his neck got injured. So it's not like this is not in front of the referee. Uh, look at the bind and then he just, I mean, and then they get the penalty. So, apart from Ox being injured, their guy scrumming against our loose head, and then after that he's grabbing Sia Kulisi, uh, Nick actually finds a way to give the penalty 
to the Lions. And I know in some of the clips I might have sound sarcastic. I apologize for that. I, I, I guess the frustration is just, I don't understand how at this level we're waiting for 12 years to play a match like this. The only thing we asked is, we only asked three things. We asked, don't let them depower us in scrums and malls. Give us the same respect as these guys on the field. Uh, and then we asked them, what are the areas that they are concerned about? And yeah, it's a negative place to be at. And I think we, with me being here or not being here, uh, I think we can do it much better. Uh, if you guys request that I'm not involved further with the stage matches, no problem. And then, yeah, uh, you know, if you think this was going over the top and this shouldn't go out to the media, then I did this in my personal capacity, not as part of the Springboks, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw myself from the Springbok management team. Uh, thank you.